Lil Poo by Jonathan Sundy. Pooh, you're a long way from the potty. Huh? You know where I live? Wipe away that frown and follow me down. the lever. Rang to the alphabet song. 
Little Eye sat up, stretched, and rubbed his eyes. <sighs> Last day of alphabet school! He saw his letter friends on the playground and hurried to join them. Whee! Little G gasped. <gasps> Little P pointed. Huh? And little S stared. Little I, they said. Where is your dot? Little I looked up. He looked to the left. Huh? He looked to the right. Huh? But his dot was gone. Huh? What will you do without your dot? Little A asked. Little W whimpered. <laughs> Little H handed her a hanky. All of the letters crowded around Little I. Don't worry, they said. We'll help you find a new dot. Yep. Yeah! Uh-huh. Yeah! Uh-huh. The school bell rang. It was time to make words. All the little letters scrambled into school. But Little Eye's friends didn't forget their plan. When they got to the classroom, the letters looked around. Ooh. Little A asked, how about this acorn? <laughs> Little B burst forward with a balloon. <gasps> oh. Little C cried, Try on this clock! <laughs> Little D dashed over with a donut. <laughs> Little E exclaimed, an egg is exactly what you need. <laughs> Little F followed with a flower. <laughs> Little G giggled when he found a gumball. <laughs> Little H handed over a hula hoop. Hmm. Little J joked, <laughs> How about a jumping bean? <laughs> Little K knew the answer. A kiwi. Little L lit the line with a light bulb. <gasps> Little M made her way over with a marble. <sighs> Little N nodded to a music note. <laughs> Little O opted for an oyster shell. <sighs> Little P presented a pretzel. <laughs> Little Q questioned, How about this quarter? <sighs> Little R raced over with a ring. Little S scared him with a spider. Ah! Little T thought a thumbtack would do. <laughs> oh. Oh. Little U urged him to carry an umbrella. Little V ventured forward with a valentine. Aww. W walked over with a wheel. <laughs> Little X's extra special idea was a xylophone mallet. Little Y yelled, Wear this yo yo! Little Z, always last, zoomed over with a zero. Whoa. tried them all on, but nothing felt right. 
When school ended, all the little letters went out to where their parents were gathered. Mom! Little I saw his father. <laughs> hey, hey, Dad! And sniffed back tears. <laughs> I lost my dot. Aww. <laughs> Capital I smiled. No, little I, you didn't lose your dot. You left it on your pillow this morning. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> I brought it along, but since today is the last day of school and you've grown up, I'm not sure you need it anymore. What do you think? Do you really think I'm ready to be a big eye? Capital I nodded. Stretch out your arms and point out your feet. Little I did. And when he saw his shadow on the ground, he smiled. Dad, I look just like you. I can start a sentence now. planets have been up to lately. <gasps> I should go visit them. Hi, Mercury. Oh, hey, Earth. Long time no see. I was about to go on a run. Want to race around the sun? <laughs> Let's go! Gotta go faster! Gotta go faster! I've got this! Wow, you're fast! You ran four laps in the time I did one. Thanks. I'm little, but I'm the speediest planet in the whole solar system. <laughs> Mercury zooms around the sun every 88 days. Hi, Earth. Do you mind if I borrow your moon to shoot hoops? I don't have one. No problem, Venus. I'll come play with you. <laughs> Look out! Here I come! <laughs> All right! She shoots, she scores! Whoa, swoosh! <laughs> good game, good game. Whew, you didn't miss a shot. <laughs> You're on fire, Venus. Well, I am the hottest planet in the solar system. <laughs> the surface temperature of Venus can reach 880 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> oh, how's it going, Mars? Dude! <laughs> Come surf the asteroid belt with me. Whoa, all that surfing turned up some of your rusty red dust. Righteous! Hey, that's why they call me the Red Planet. I'm the reddest 
and raddest around, bro Chacho. <laughs> Mars gets its color from an abundance of iron oxide, commonly known as rust. Jupiter! What's up, big guy? Not too much. Um, I did pick up a new hobby. Nice. Hmm, uh, basketball? Weightlifting? <laughs> no. Jupiter dance. <laughs> that was beautiful. Uh -huh. I didn't know the biggest planet in the solar system was so graceful. <laughs> Thanks. I may be large, but I'm light on my feet. <laughs> Jupiter is mainly made up of gases, such as hydrogen and helium. Uh, hi, Saturn. Um, your rings look extra sparkly today. Y'all are too sweet. <laughs> I added some shiny ice chunks to the rocky bits in space dust. Come hula hoop with me. Play! <laughs> She's the most amazing planet in the universe. Galileo first spotted Saturn's rings in 1610. <laughs> What the? Your hula hooping skills are electrifying. Are you trying to look cooler than me? N no way, Uranus. Everyone knows you're the coolest planet around. That's a fact. Sorry for the frosty greeting, kid. Uranus has the coldest recorded temperature of any planet at negative 371 degrees Fahrenheit. What are you doing way out here, Neptune? I like how quiet and beautiful it is. Ooh, look how those comets light up the sky. Beyond Neptune, the Kuiper Belt is a source of comets. It's the best view in the solar system. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> wow. The other planets are so special. I'm not the fastest, the biggest, or the coolest. Hm. I must be the most boring planet in the solar system. We have something for you, Tiny Blue Marble. For me? Surprise! <laughs> Your air is the freshest. Me? You're covered in flowing water. Yeah? And most importantly... Hmm? You're full of life!
made me the happiest planet in the whole solar system. The end. Corn and horse. This is unicorn. And this is horse. Unicorn is a unicorn. And horse is, well, not. Unicorn has a sapphire horn, a silver coat, a rainbow mane, and perfect white teeth. Horse does not. Unicorn eats pink cupcakes for every meal. Horse does not. Unicorn makes rainbows. Horse makes something else. Oh. Unicorn dances. Tra la la. Horse sits grumpy. Blah, blah, blah. Unicorn prances. Ha, ha, ha. Horse looks frumpy. Pa, pa, pa. Unicorn makes everything cheery. <laughs> Really cheery. Horse does not. Of course, all the animals love unicorn. He has a horn for squirrel to play ring toss. Bird lines her nest with his long, beautiful hair. And everyone loves yummy sharing his cupcakes. Won't you join us, horse? said Unicorn. No, I don't like you, said Horse. But what he meant was, <laughs> I wish I were you. Unfortunately, not everyone who heard about Unicorn was a happy or unhappy animal. A rainbow dancing unicorn who eats cupcakes for breakfast could make someone a lot of money! <laughs> One night while everyone was asleep, two men crept into unicorn's paddock. Quietly as they could, they tied a startled unicorn in ropes and loaded him into the back of their truck. Then, they were off. The other animals awoke when they heard the truck. Hurry, they're stealing unicorn. But uh, I can't run fast enough to catch them, said Squirrel. And I can't fly fast enough, cried Bird. I can't run on the road, said Fox. And I can't run at all, said Turtle. Only one animal could. Horse thought and thought and thought. Then he ran and ran and ran. And with six great chomps of horses' large teeth, Unicorn was free. Thank you, said Unicorn. You're welcome, said Horse. This 
This is horse. And this is unicorn. <laughs> sometimes horse eats cupcakes. And sometimes unicorn eats hay. Sometimes horse makes rainbows. And sometimes unicorn does not. Horse likes races. Unicorn likes ring toss. But most of all, they like each other. Horse and unicorn are friends. And that's better than anything. <laughs> Even pink cupcakes. to turn four. All of my friends will come over and play. Then piles of presents will fill our driveway. We'll have a huge cake, mm. and my buddies will say, your party was perfect. Hip, hip, hooray! Mikey's mom smiled as he finished his speech. Your plan is fantastic, my sweet little peach. But no celebration is ever complete until you've decided what you want to eat. Her statement stopped him dead in his tracks. <gasps> Food, of course. Every party needs snacks. Well, pizza is something that everyone loves. But tacos fit in your hand like a glove. Burgers and hot dogs are easy to eat. But pork and fried rice is such a nice treat. He needed a guru, a trusted grub guy. Maybe my grannies can help me decide. What food did you have for your birthday, Babu? In Hong Kong, Chinese food is all that we knew. Huh. Nona, do you know what food you would choose? My roots are Italian, so pasta can't lose. Oh. Chinese or Italian? Both are delicious. He remembered his cousin's birthday dishes. For the twins, rice and spice on their special day. While Joe had lasagna, he ate a whole tray. Yum, 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 yum. Mikey was stuck, not sure what to do. He couldn't decide between the two. Ravioli or dumplings? Linguini or lo mein? All of these options were hurting his brain. Focaccia, burrata, caprese, risotto, dim sum or wontons or noodles and shrimp roe. His mind was a jumble of possible choices. He heard both sides of his family's voices. <sighs> he rushed to the park to get out of his head. His best friend, Sophia, found him and said, Are you okay, Mikey? Why so much sorrow? I can't pick a dish, and my party's tomorrow. Your mom is Italian, your dad is Chinese. You're free to choose food as unique as you please. Why not have both? Is that too outrageous? 
a Chinese-Italian mashup for the ages. <gasps> yeah! Sophia, that's it. I don't have to choose one. He bolted straight home. There was lots to get done. <sighs> Mikey burst in the kitchen. I'm ready to pick. I've made my decision. This isn't a trick. I want fried rice and marinara sauce. That'll be different, but hey, you're the boss. <gasps> he awoke the next day in a jittery mood. Friends were arriving. Will they like the food? Mikey's mom fried up a wok full of rice. In went the veggies, two eggs, and some spice. His friends helped give the tomatoes a squish. They drizzled the sauce to complete the new dish. Mikey tensed up as his friends took a taste. But the fusion of flavors lit up every face. Despite any doubts, the meal couldn't be beat. The fried rice was savory, the marinara sweet. It tasted more scrumptious than they thought it could. The whole party shouted out, <laughs> Different is good! Chair. No, it's mine. I was sitting in it before. I'm sitting in it now. I had it first. It's mine. I have it now. It's mine. It's mine. Please? Just once? Mm. Yeah. Okay, just once. <gasps> <laughs> um, look out. <laughs> hey! That's my chair. No, it's mine. Uh, what? Tickle, tickle. <laughs> tickle, <Stop>. tickle. <laughs> tickle, tickle. <laughs> 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 Mine. 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 Get up. It's mine. Go away! It's mine! It's mine! Hmm? 
<sighs> I'm sorry. Me too. Want to go play? Yeah! Flower by Joseph Kiefler. It was morning, and the big trucks were ready to work. Let's hoist, said Crane. Let's push, said Dozer. Let's dig, said Digger. Together, they built tall buildings for working. They built roads for driving and bridges for crossing. They built and built until the loud whistle blew. I'm beat, said Crane. Me too, said Dozer. The other big trucks took a break, but Digger did not. He had found something in the rubble. Hmm. Hello there, he said. The flower was tiny, but it was beautiful. Every day, while the other big trucks built, Digger visited the flower. He watered it when its leaves looked dry. Drink up. He shielded it on windy days. Before he switched off for the night, Digger sang the flower a bedtime song. <laughs> the flower grew, but the city grew too. Soon, every space had been filled. Every space but one. We need to put a building here, said Crane. Dozer started his engine. Before Digger could stop him, uh, uh, Dozer blew a big puff of smoke. And cut the flower down. Oh. 
Then the other big trucks went back to work. Oh, but Digger did not. When the smoke cleared, Digger saw something in the rubble. Mm. 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 Little seeds, he said. He scooped them up and drove. Mm. 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 drove past the tall buildings, past the farthest house on the farthest street. He drove to a place no big truck had ever been. There, Digger stopped. He dug uh, 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 and scooped. Mm. And tucked the seeds into the warm earth. Every day, Digger cared for the seeds. He watered them when their leaves looked dry. He shielded them on windy days. And just before he switched off for the night, Digger sang the flowers a bedtime song. Where are you? By Jonathan Sunday. Where are you? Lounging in my nook, reading a good book. Where are you? Sitting on a cinder block, knitting me a winter sock. Where are you? Having a yummy plump plum with my lumpy stump chum. <laughs> Where are you? Riding George the gorgeous porpoise past enormous surging orcas. Where are you? Getting ready to slurp spaghetti with Freddy Gazzetti, the sweaty yeti. <laughs> Where are you? Riding on the back of a giraffe gone quackers while snacking on a pack of alpaca shaped crackers. Where are you? Surfing on a blue spruce with old Rusty McDoose, but my trusty goose noose feels a wee bit loose. <laughs> oh. 
a wee bit loof? Where are you, goof? Is? I'm here in this box, safe from hard knocks. Do you want to come play? Not right now. I'm afraid. We could snack on the way. I think I'll just stay. <sighs> if the here where you are isn't the where that you want, don't sit where you are feeling glum on your bum. Get up and start working to change where you're from. Cause bruises and gooses and fears and excuses can't stop you from living the life that you choose, Is? Is? Where are you? Oh, sorry for skipping the end of your speech. Had to rescue an Eskimo lost on the beach. Then I wrote a hit song about butternut squashes. Now I'm testing some specs on my rocket galoshes. Woohoo! Thanks for the boost. The end. Our class is a family. When you think of a family, you might picture one in a house. A mom, a dad, a couple of kids, plus their dogs, and a pet mouse. Perhaps you think of grandma. Or a stepmom and stepdad. It could be those 14 cousins. Or that twin who makes you mad. But family doesn't have to be who you're related to. It can be another special group who love and care for you. Have you ever thought about where most of your time is spent? It's at school with all of us. That's where all those hours went. So if our classroom is the place where we spend our days, why wouldn't we want to make it like a home in many ways? It's a place where we can show respect and kindness to each other. A spot where we can be ourselves and make memories with one another. We'll have things in common. These are connections that we'll seek. But we'll still celebrate our differences and what makes us each unique. Our classroom is a special haven where it's okay to make mistakes. We learn from them and try again, no matter what it takes. We'll all have tough days sometimes, but your teacher is here for you. <laughs> and as long as you're a friend to others, your peers will be there too. Ouch. In this class,
classroom of four walls, we will stick together. We'll help each other learn and grow in any kind of weather. So let's always remember what a great team we can be. You have our back and we have yours. We're a classroom family. The Boy Who Grew a Forest. The True Story of Jadav Paying. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is now. Proverb. In India, on a large river island, among farms and families, hard at work, there lived a boy who loved trees. Trees meant shade, food, and shelter for many. But each rainy season, Floodwaters swallowed more and more of the beautiful tree-covered land. The boy's precious island was shrinking, eroding away with the rushing river, leaving empty sandbars behind. The boy witnessed animals stranded on those sandbars, their homes destroyed. He feared that if animals withered without trees, people would do. The boy shared his fears with the village. The elders explained that the only way to help animals was to create new homes for them. They gifted the boy with 20 bamboo saplings. Alone, he canoed down the muddy river. He wished he could cover all the land with trees. But a large sandbar nearby was a place to start. The land was too barren for animals, the shores too sandy for leafy trees. Would bamboo grow? The boy hoped. Determined, he began to plant. One shaft, two, then three. Every day, he watered the saplings by hand, sweat, trickling down his face and chest. He built a watering system to help and lugged heavy buckets from the river. His arms grew tired, his back sore. Still, each day he tended to the plants and, over time, the bamboo patch grew into a healthy thicket. The boy was proud of his work, but he worried it wouldn't be enough to stop the swelling river or to provide shelter for animals. 
If he wanted more plants to grow, he would have to create a richer soil. The boy carried cow dung, earthworms, termites, and angry red ants that bit him on the journey to the new home. He brought seeds from neighboring villages, over trails, through brush, down the river. Each day, he planted. As years passed and the boy grew, so did a forest. Ten acres, twenty acres, then forty. Wildlife returned for the first time in many years. Buffalo, one-horned rhinos and snakes, gibbons, migratory birds and elephants. The man's forest teemed with life and diversity. Not everyone was happy. Fear swept over the villages when tigers arrived. So the man planted more grasses to attract small animals that would keep the tigers happy in the forest. Elephants wandered into neighboring farms to feast on the crops. So the man planted more fruiting trees to help feed the hungry elephants. Some wanted to harvest the forest to build homes. But the man was there to plant anew. Others tried to hunt the animals for their horns and fur. But the man was there to protect. thought the forest would last, but the man believed in its strength. Now in India, on a large river island, among wildlife and trees as tall as buildings, there lives a man who has planted a forest. The forest is called Molai, after a man named Jadav Molai Payin, who never stopped planting and pruning and protecting. Only by growing plants, the earth will survive. Jadav Payin. Near the bank of the river, one warm spring day, a new life began, and her name was May. Mama held May in a warm, tender hug, then said goodbye to her sweet baby bug. You have your whole life, a day, perhaps more. 
Don't waste it, May. Use your wings and explore. Her delicate wings were feathery light. With a flit and a flutter, May took off in flight. There was so much to see and so much to know, but a dangerous thing was lurking below. It was big. It was hungry. It needed to eat. A newly hatched mayfly would make a great treat. Disguising its dark and deceitful sneer, it pleasantly said, Come closer, my dear. I have something here that you really must see. But you're too far away. Come closer to me. A voice inside her warned, May, don't go. But May didn't listen and swooped down too low. It sprang from the water, and that's when May saw two rows of sharp teeth and a menacing jaw. It snapped its mouth tight to gobble up May. But she ducked and she darted and somehow got away. May found safety in the hollow of a tree. She covered her eyes and tried not to breathe. Her body shuddered at the thought of trout. I'll stay here forever. I'm not coming out. But when her heart slowed, May heard a sweet sound. Peeking out slowly, she looked all around. A robin nearby gave a cheerful tweet, then flew to her babies with something to eat. The mist on the river was a fine pink cloak. A bullfrog bellowed his morning croak. May noticed the beauty of a web in the sun, the glittering silk the spider had spun. Mama was right. There's so much to see. I can't live my life inside this tree. So May launched herself from the dark, hollow place. A greeting from the sun put a smile on her face. Hmm. May followed the river along as it flowed. She saw cattails swaying and a stubby toad. And bounding along without a care, two cubs following Mama Bear. There were bluebells in clusters offering up for Hummingbird a cool drink from their cups. A newborn fawn on wobbly knees. And then in a clearing, May could see. A singing, dancing, 
jamboree. A wild mayfly jubilee. Joining in, May danced with glee. The day rambled on and shadows grew long. Nature was singing its afternoon song. May floated along on a warm, gentle breeze, when faintly she heard a desperate plea. With shaky wings, she followed the sound, but May stopped cold at what she found. Snagged in a mess, his body still, the only movement from his gill. May inched closer, slow, unsure. Afraid again, he'd lunge at her. The trout was weak, no flip or flail. Tangled line had caught his tail. May's eyes lingered on Trout's jaw. But this time, there was more she saw. The snag had taken all Trout's fight, yet his colors shimmered in the light. Rainbow stripes in every hue, silver, pink, and shades of blue. May saw a scar where once he'd fought to keep himself from being caught. And when her gaze met Trout's scared eyes, we're not so different, May then realized. The fear she had felt, May now forgot, and she quickly started on the knot. The knot so tight, her progress slow, but then at last, the line let go. The river carried Trout away. May wondered, will he be okay? The silence was broken with a startling splash. Scanning the river, May saw a flash. Breaking the surface and catching the light, Trout flipped his tail and waved good night. And then an echo on the wind that blew. Two simple, precious words. Thank you. Her spirits matching the river's glow, May settled in for the nighttime show. Crickets and bullfrogs played their sweet tune while fireflies twinkled beneath the full moon. The stars came out early for sweet little May. She counted each one, then called it a day. The end. Once there was a boy who had no toys to play with. 
The other children in the neighborhood had lots of toys. Every afternoon, the boy would go to the park, sit under a big tree, and watch the other children play. Sometimes they let the boy play with their toys, sometimes not. This made the boy sad. One day, as the boy was sitting under the big tree in the park, he noticed a stick leaning against the trunk. He had never seen such an unusual stick. He picked it up. Suddenly, he was a pirate. Arg! Then, a baseball player at bat. And then, a knight on a steed. The boy noticed that there were words carved into the stick. He sang them like a song. Imagination lives in you. It's the fire in all you do. Use it well, and you can be anything you want to be. The boy carried the stick everywhere, and anywhere he was, he was anything he wanted to be. At the beach, he was a fisherman. At the lake, he paddled a canoe. He was a hiker in the highlands. And his imagination grew. Time passed, and the boy grew up. With the stick's inspiration, he became everything he wanted to be. He took business trips and airplane rides. He sailed the seas on rising tides. He gave of his time. He gave of his wealth. He gave from his heart. He gave of himself. He built a house high on a hill overlooking the valley where he had grown up. In the distance, he could see the park and the old tree where he used to sit. As the years passed, the boy became an old man. But each day, he took his stick with him to the park and sat on a bench near the tree where he had found the stick so long ago. He would sit for hours and watch the children play. All of the children seemed to have lots of toys to play with, except for one little girl. The little girl always sat under the old tree and watched the other children play with their toys. This made the old man sad. Early one morning, the old man walked to the park, but instead of sitting on the bench, he went over to the tree. He leaned the stick against its trunk, walked to his bench, and waited. Soon, the children arrived at the park with their toys. He waited to see if the little girl would show. He saw her walk slowly toward the tree. She peered down at the unusual stick leaning against its trunk. She picked up the stick, and suddenly, she was a princess. 
a fencer. Then a surfer riding a wave. She noticed that there were words carved into the stick. And as she danced away, she sang them like a song. Imagination lives in you. It's the fire in all you do. Use it well, and you can be anything you want to be. And the old man smiled and walked home. Written by Amy Krauss Rosenthal. Illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds. It goes like this. Little Miss. Planted a kiss. Planted a kiss? Planted a kiss. Sunshine. Water. Greet. Repeat. Wait and <sighs> wait. <sighs> Getting late. Doubt. Pout. Sprout. <laughs> Shout! Shout! Gather about. Wow. What now? Stare and stare. I'll share, she declared. Don't you dare. It's far too rare. I it'll go bare. She didn't care. From there, everywhere. To and fro. High. And low. Rain or snow with a bow. Alas, time to go. So she returned. There she learned. From one little kiss. <gasps> Endless bliss.
bliss. Goldilocks, written by Leslie Falconer, pictures by Chris Lynch. Goldilocks loved Baby Bear. They did everything together. They ate snacks. They read books. They played hide and seek. They did everything together. Everything that is, except clean up. One day, Baby Bear disappeared. Goldilocks looked everywhere, but everywhere was a big mess. It was a mess on the table. It was a mess on the chair. It was a mess on her bed. Goldilocks cried herself to sleep. Her bear was lost. I have to find Baby Bear, Goldilocks said as she ran into the dark woods of her dream. She came upon a cottage built into the trunk of a great oak tree. The door was open. Maybe Baby Bear was inside. So Goldilocks peeked inside and saw a mess. Even if Baby Bear was here, she would never be able to find him. So she set about tidying up the cottage. She started with a pile of dirty dishes on the table. Goldilocks quickly washed the dishes and set them nicely back onto the table. Then she organized the rest of the room, all the while hoping she might find Baby Bear. Just as she finished, she saw a mess of books stacked on three chairs. There were so many books on the smallest chair that it had fallen apart. Goldilocks fixed the small chair, and then she put the books neatly away. Still, she did not find her bear. As Goldilocks looked up from the books, she saw a long, mysterious staircase. She wondered what was at the top. Could Baby Bear be up there? She tiptoed up the stairs and saw another mess. Blankets, pillows, and clothes were all over the floor. Maybe Baby Bear was here, but she could not see him. So Goldilocks shook out the blankets and carefully made the beds. Next, she fluffed the pillows until they were as soft as clouds. And finally, she put the clothes away. Exhausted from cleaning, Goldilocks decided to take a little nap. As she was sleeping, three bears arrived home from a day of picking berries. Someone's been washing my dirty dishes, exclaimed Papa Bear. Someone's been washing my dirty dishes too, said Mama Bear. Someone's been washing my dirty dishes and nicely set the table, said Baby Bear. The bears clapped their paws in happiness. And look, said Papa Bear, someone has been cleaning up the books on my chair. Someone's been cleaning up the books on my chair too, said Mama Bear. Someone's been cleaning up the books on my chair and even fixed the broken leg, said Baby Bear. Baby Bear jumped into his chair with a big smile. But the bears were confused. Who had cleaned up their mess? When they noticed that their bedroom door upstairs was open, they decided to investigate. They bumbled up the stairs. And Papa Bear exclaimed, Someone's been folding the blankets on my bed. Someone's been folding the blankets on my bed too, said Mama Bear. Someone's been folding the blankets on my bed, 
and is sleeping on my pillow right now, exclaimed Baby Bear. Just then, Goldilocks woke up and saw Baby Bear. The sun is rising. Backhoe will find holes to dig, things to carry. It's a new day to be kind. Excuse me, please. Could you move to the right? Someone is sad. Backhoe thinks what to do. <laughs> Perhaps some giggles with a game of peekaboo. Stuck in a tree. Bulldozer will reach up, up, up. Now Kitty is down, safe and free. Mud splashes front loader right in the eye. Water truck washes it off, spraying low, <laughs> spraying high. <laughs> I'll carry up high, says kind front loader. The puppy is dry. The danger is over. Yar! Excavator, please. We need a hole here. <laughs> Yar! Dig and dump. Dig and dump. Playtime is near. <laughs> Cement truck's wheels are stuck in the muck. Not to worry. She just needs a soft hole from kind <gasps> dump truck. With the sun low in the sky, Teddy Bear is easy to find. Rain reaches down to share. Hmm. <laughs> All trucks dig, being kind. Magic Garden. Alice lived at the dreariest boarding school in all of England. The students wore stiff grey uniforms. Great grey clocks ticked off slow grey minutes. The drab, 
dusty rooms even smelled grey. The cook invariably boiled the flavour and colour out of breakfast, lunch and dinner. All the food had the consistency of porridge, except the porridge. Finish all your food or it's off with your head, the headmistress screeched. Submerged in unending grey, Alice swallowed a flavourless spoonful and sighed. How I wish for friends to bring colour to my days. Alice forced down her meal and sought solace with playing cards. She felt alone, though the others never left her alone. Looks like you've been dealt a bad hand. Finding no friends inside, Alice fled outside. Alice breathed in the fragrant air. She grinned at the lush green grass. She explored around the building until she discovered a walled garden, hidden and untended. Thereafter, she returned to plant petunias. Water the wisteria. And dig up dandelions. Beg your pardon. In the calm of her secret wonderland, Alice sang to squirrels and danced with dragonflies. Flowers burst forth like the freckles on Alice's sun-kissed nose. The garden flourished under her care in more than just the usual way, because kindness is a curious thing. One day, a caterpillar struggled in a web. Not to worry. Alice freed it with gentle hands. Are you hot, Laurie Bird? asked Alice. Chap! Alice filled the bird bath with cool water. Later, Alice spotted a grinning cat ready to pounce on a rabbit. Shoo! Find your supper elsewhere! The cat scowled, then vanished. You're safe now, rabbit! Bong, bong, bong. The clock cheerlessly chimed tea time. Alice trudged inside. After the vivid colours of her garden, the shabby walls and dirty windows seemed duller than ever. Another cup of lukewarm water and stale biscuit, I expect. Alice looked down. Bless me! She glanced around for her benefactor. But all she saw were sombre faces staring at their meagre snacks. How curious! Alice shared her treats before the headmistress called everyone to afternoon lessons. Class ended when the clock struggled to toll five times. 
Even the clock sounds tired and grey, thought Alice. But when she reached to gather her things, a golden pocket watch lay gleaming on her notebook. Beautiful, but curiouser and curiouser. I should put this somewhere safe. Alice skipped upstairs to her dull, dingy room. Good heavens, what's all this? I shall gather some flowers for this fine vase. Alice stole to her hidden garden, but she wasn't the only one. One bully trod on the tulips. Another bumped the bird bath. Got any more tarts? asked one. I and I fancy that gold pocket watch, said another. I'll have that vase, demanded the biggest of the group. Nonsense, they aren't yours and you shan't have them, replied Alice perhaps more bravely than she felt. The bullies closed in around Alice. One reached for the vase. Alice stood her ground. But she did not stand alone. An enormous caterpillar reared from a rose bush. A griffin with sharp talons swooped past. The bullies shrieked and stumbled from the garden. An unusually large rabbit gave each a thump on the rump, just for good measure. What are you? asked Alice. We are Caterpillar, Lorybird and Rabbit. But... Rabbit smiled. Kindness is magical. Yours changed us into what you now see. Alice curtsied. Well, many thanks for your kindness. Our pleasure, replied Caterpillar. Caring for each other is what friends do. F friends? Alice's face lit with wonder. So we're friends? Now and forever, they replied. And indeed, her friends brought Alice wonder for the rest of her days. Chapter One Who's There? Late, late at night, Mouse heard a sigh, then a scratch. Then a scrape. Then an odd little cry. She looked in the closet and behind the door. She looked in the cupboard. She looked in the drawer. She checked very carefully under the chair. Must be a ghost, said Mouse. Who's there? Chapter Two A Plan The next day, Mouse told her friends about the sounds in the night. You need a trap, 
said Wren. I'll spin a web, said Spider. With any luck, the ghost will get stuck. Bunny said, I'll bring peas to spread on the floor. The ghost will trip or maybe slip. Turn out your lights so the ghost cannot see, said Mole helpfully. It won't work said Goat. Woohoo! Chapter 3 Setting the Trap So that night, Mouse hung the web, spread the peas, and turned out the light. And late, late that night, Mouse heard a sigh. <sighs> then a scratch. Then a scrape. Then an odd little cry. Mouse hopped out of bed, excited to see what she had caught. But she slipped on a pea. She fell into the web and got stuck like a fly. This plan does not work, said Mouse with a sigh. Chapter 4 A New Plan. I told you so, said Goat the next day. For catching a ghost, that's not the way. Then tell us what is, Mouse said to Goat. Please. Of course, said Goat. The best way is cheese. Chapter 5 Catching the ghost. So that night, Mouse put cheese on the table and behind the door and under the chair on her shiny new floor. Then she hid in the closet as quiet as a mouse and perked up her ears to the sounds in her house. And she heard... Nibble, 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 slurp. Slipper, slapper, slobber. Boop. Chapter 6. Caught. Mouse switched on the light. There in her house was the skinniest, scraggliest, scruffy young mouse. His coat was all matted. He had a black eye. His whiskers were sticky. Miss Mouse said, Oh my! Please, miss, said the mouse. Don't send me away. I don't have a home. If you let me stay, I'll wash your windows and scrub your floors and make your bed and paint your doors and... <sighs> Calm down, said Miss Mouse. Of course you can stay. When you've had a bath, 
What's your name, anyway? Malachi Gimcrack, he said. Call me Mac. Chapter 7. A Happy Ending Such a snug little house for two mice together. In rain and in shine, in all kinds of weather. Old friends and new friends come over to play. <laughs> and this mystery ends with a party. Hooray! <laughs> Put it on crackers. Put it on bread. Cheese goes best with friends, Goat said. The End Sweet people are everywhere by Alice Walker. Illustrated by Keem Torres. For young Brian, who is getting a passport. Some of the people in Turkey are very sweet. Some of those in Afghanistan are very sweet. Some of the people in the United States are very sweet. In Canada, too, some of the people are sweet. In Mexico, you will definitely find sweet people. <laughs> Likewise, in Sudan. There are sweet people among the Zulu in South Africa. And every language group in Africa has some sweet people in it. There are sweet people in Iceland and in Russia. There are many sweet people in Korea. There are millions of sweet people in China. There are sweet people in Japan. If the sweet people were the leaders in historically warring countries, they would treat each other much better. There are sweet people in Congo. There are sweet people in Egypt. 
and sweet people in Australia. Many sweet people are in Norway. Numerous sweet people are in Spain. There are many sweet people in Ghana. And Kenya. And sweet people also in Guam. And the Philippines. There are sweet people in Cuba. Many sweet people exist in Iran. There are sweet people in Libya. And Colombia. Sweet people are in Vietnam. Sweet people exist in England and Myanmar. There are sweet people for sure in Ireland. <laughs> sweet people are in France. <laughs> Sweet people are holding on in Syria. They are doing the same in Iraq. Some sweet people live in Venezuela. Many very sweet people live in Brazil. There are sweet people in Israel, as there are sweet people also in Palestine. Actually, in almost every house on the planet, there is at least one very sweet person that you would be happy to know. Sweet people are everywhere. Being sweet, they must not be disappeared. We are lost if we can no longer experience how sweet human beings can be. Promise me never to forget this, no matter how far you go or who sends you. Let's Be Friends by Marshall Bex and Ali Stahl. Early one morning, just as the sun was starting to rise, Rosie woke up, stretched, and rubbed her eyes. It's a brand new day, she exclaimed. 
I just know there will be so much to see and do. I can't wait to go out and play. Rosie looked all around for a friend to play with her, but there was no one else there. I guess I'll just have to go play by myself, she sighed. So Rosie started off on her adventure all alone. It wasn't long before she happened upon a strange looking creature. Rosie scurried over to investigate. You don't really look like a fox, said Rosie. Squeak, said the little creature. You don't really smell like a fox, said Rosie. Squeak, said the little creature. And you don't really sound like a fox, said Rosie. Squeak, my name is Colby. And I'm definitely not a fox. I am a mouse. Squeak. Will you play with me? Rosie asked him. Of course, said Colby. The two new friends took off to go play. Rosie was so excited to have a friend to play with that she started to run faster and faster and faster. Wait for me, shouted Colby from behind. Let's play hide and seek, said Rosie. Great idea, I'll count. Colby covered his eyes. One, two, three. Ready or not, here I come. Rosie and Colby were certainly enjoying their fun day together, but they were running out of things to do. Let's go swimming in the pond, said Colby. Great idea, said Rosie. She took off running towards the pond with Colby hanging on to her tightly. Over by the pond, there was a little gosling named Puddles who was wishing he had some friends to play with too. Stay close to the pond where I can see you play, Mother Goose instructed. Okay, Mama, said Puddles. Puddles looked all around for a friend to play with him, but there was no one else there. I guess I'll just have to go play by myself, he sighed. <sighs> just then, Rosie and Colby arrived at the pond. They were about to jump into the water when they noticed a strange looking creature. The two friends scurried over to investigate. You don't really look like a fox, said Rosie. Or a mouse, said Colby. Honk, said the little creature. You don't really smell like a fox, said Rosie. Or a mouse, said Colby. Honk, said the little creature. And you don't really sound like a fox, said Rosie. Or a mouse, said Colby. Honk, my name is Puddles, and I'm definitely not a fox or a mouse. I'm a gosling, honk. Will you play with us? Rosie asked him. Of course, said Puddles. Puddles ran up to Mother Goose. Can I go play with my new friends? He asked. As long as you play here in the pond, said Mother Goose. Let's play! The three new friends jumped into the pond. They played and swam and splashed around for hours and hours. After they had finished swimming, Rosie wrapped her new friends in a great big hug. I am so glad I found some friends today. After a long day of playing, just as the sun was starting to set, Rosie and Colby and Puddles yawned very tired yawns and rubbed very tired eyes. Then they all cuddled up next to each other and fell fast asleep, each one dreaming about the adventures they would have together tomorrow. Cinderella by Leslie Harder Illustrated by Natasha Herzl Cinderella was a sad servant girl who 
who had absolutely nothing to wear. Well, not nothing. She did have a handkerchief that she wore on her head, but it was hideous and full of huge holes. She did have a dress that she wore every day, but it was dingy and dusty and worst of all, dull. She did have two socks that went under her shoes, but they smelled sour and were soaked in black soot. Cinderella's stepsisters, on the other hand, were not sad servant girls. They had everything to wear. They had colorful costumes, handsome hats, and shiny, showy shoes. That's why they were going to the ball, and Cinderella was sitting at home. Because everyone knows the ball is the perfect place for colorful costumes, handsome hats, and shiny, showy shoes. If only it was the perfect place for me, thought Cinderella. Yes, Cinderella had absolutely nothing to wear, but inside she had an awful lot. Inside of her there was a great glowing goodness, a courageous caring kindness, and a soft safe sweetness. Even the birds and mice agreed. Her fairy godmother knew that someone as sweet, kind, and good as Cinderella needed to go to the ball. So with a whirl of her wand, the sweet servant girl's holy handkerchief became a twinkling tiara. Her dingy dress, a gorgeous gown, and her smelly socks, a set of sparkling slippers. At the ball, Cinderella saw more colorful costumes, handsome hats, and showy shoes than she'd ever seen in her stepsister's closets. And they had very big closets. Cinderella had never felt so happy in all her sad servant life. The prince was a bored boy who had absolutely nothing to do at his very boring ball, until he saw a twinkling tiara, gorgeous gown, sparkling slippers, and a not-so-sad servant girl. He knew it was time to dance. And they danced and talked and smiled and laughed, song after song after song after song after song. A prince might dance once with a girl wearing a gorgeous gown. He might dance twice with a girl in a twinkling tiara, or even three times with sparkling slippers. But when a girl has great glowing goodness, courageous caring kindness, and a soft safe sweetness, a prince simply must dance, song after song after song. After song after song. The fairy godmother's magic soon faded, and Cinderella again had nothing to wear. But the prince did not care. He only cared for her. And of course, they lived happily ever after. Courageous people who changed the world. William Wilberforce. It is inconceivable that we could be bored in a world with so much wrong to tackle. Little William saw people from Africa being taken as slaves. 
He knew he had to do something. William told everyone who would listen how bad the slave ships were. In 1807, the leaders of Great Britain finally agreed that the slave trade should end. Harriet Tubman. You have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to change the world. Little Harriet did not like being told what to do, but because she had dark skin, that's exactly what happened all day long. In 1849, Harriet ran north to freedom. She helped others escape too. People called her secret path the Underground Railroad. Abraham Lincoln. Be sure you put your feet in the right place. Then stand firm. Little Abe saw many people working as slaves in America. No one could agree whether that was good or bad. Abe became president. In 1863, he signed a paper that said all the slaves would be free. Many people were angry but Abe knew it was the right thing to do. Susan B. Anthony. Failure is impossible. Little Susan wanted to vote for her leaders like the boys could, but that was illegal for girls. Susan tried to vote once, but she got arrested. Susan spent her whole life telling people that everyone should be treated equally. Finally, word spread that things had to change. In 1920, women in America gained the right to vote. Mahatma Gandhi. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. Little Gandhi liked working things out peacefully. When Great Britain tried to make his people pay for salt, Gandhi didn't fight. Instead, in 1930, he walked 241 miles to the coast to get his own salt. Gandhi's peaceful march helped thousands of people realize that India should be its own country and that you don't have to fight to make a difference. Rosa Parks. I believe we are here on the planet Earth to live, grow up, and do what we can to make this world a better place. Little Rosa noticed that the children with white skin got to ride the bus to school. Children with dark skin had to walk to an older building. In 1955, a city bus driver told Rosa to give her seat to a man with light skin. Nope, Rosa said. She went
went to jail. Many people stopped riding the bus. After 381 days, the leaders decided to change the rules. Martin Luther King Jr. The time is always right to do what is right. Little Martin went shoe shopping with his dad. The owner said, We only serve people with dark skin in the back. They left the store instead. One day, Martin gave a speech about how we should treat each other. I have a dream, he said. He wanted everyone to be judged by their hearts, not by the color of their skin. In 1964, American leaders finally agreed that Martin was right. Malala Yousafzai One child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. Little Malala loved to learn. But in Pakistan where she lived, some people said girls shouldn't go to school. Some people tried to stop her. Brave Malala didn't back down. She insisted that every child should go to school. In 2014, when she was 17, Malala became the youngest person to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. These heroes stood up to make a difference in the world. What kind of hero will you be? A boy like you. There are billions and billions and billions of people in the world. But you are the only you there is. And the world needs a boy like you. The world needs a boy to be kind and helpful, to be smart and strong. Maybe your strong is making sure everyone has a chance to play. Maybe your smart is knowing the precisely right, perfect pass to make. Oh boy, be you, the you that makes you feel most alive. Play hard, but play fair. Be a great teammate. Say, nice goal, and good try. Don't say you throw like a girl, ever. And remember, there's so much more than sports. There are vegetable gardens to grow and flowers to give. There are cakes to bake and eat, too. There are instruments to play and songs to sing. There are stories to read and stories to write. 
there are science experiments to do and math problems to solve. Oh boy, be curious. Take a risk and raise your hand. Smart kids ask questions, so ask a lot of them. The more you know, the less you'll fear. Here's a secret that not many people know. Fear and bravery are partners. You can't be brave without first being afraid. If you're not ready to be brave, ask for help. This shows you're smart. Sometimes, you may feel like crying. <laughs> Cry. This shows you're strong. One day, you'll be a man. And men cry too. Oh boy, dream big. You are unique. And your dreams are yours to dream. It's okay to not know exactly what you want to be or what you will become. But whatever you become, become a good one. And remember this about dreams. You don't get what you wish for. You get what you work for. So work hard for what you want. In this world, you will meet all kinds of people and all of them are different. Ask people to tell you their stories. Then listen, listen hard. Stories connect all of us. They're part of what makes us who we are. Don't forget to tell your own story too. As you travel and come and go, Hug your family and high-five your friends. High-five your family and hug your friends. Walk with your head up. You'll want to see where you're going. Smile at people and say hello. Leave every place you visit better than you found it. And leave every person better than you found them. Say please, say thank you, say I love you. And if that's not exactly right, simply say I like you. And maybe most importantly, say how may I help? <laughs> Helping each other is the best way to make our world stronger. Oh boy, be thoughtful. Eat lunch with the new kid. Hold the door for the person behind you. Do the right thing, even when no one is looking. And most of all, be you you'll discover that the best you is the you that is all you. Not a little you and a little someone else. You are original, and that's a wonderful thing. And always remember, the world needs a boy, a smart boy, a brave boy, a kind boy, Oh boy, a boy like you.
big. Long ago, in the wilds of East Africa, when the savannas were new, This moody baboon discovered a powerful secret. Shh. It began one starry night when Caterpillar looked up at a twinkling star and whispered, Oh, I wish I could be like bird and fly. Nosy baboon heard and couldn't help but sneer. How can you fly with all those feet clinging onto that tree? Oh no, you're right. Caterpillar cried and spun a cocoon to hide. But Caterpillar still kept dreaming. Finally, Caterpillar broke free. Looking up at his star, he smiled big in who he is and clapped. But I can, I believe. Whoosh, wham, you can be anything. Yes, Caterpillar grew wings. And Baboon's eyes popped out of his head as that first butterfly flew by and said, Look at me, a bug who started with 16 feet can fly like a bird because I believed in myself and my dream. Excited, the next starry night, Baboon started playing his drum when he noticed Tadpole wish upon his twinkling star. Oh, I wish I could dance and sing to that cool drum beat. Baboon puffed out his chest with pride, but still he sneered. How can you dance? You got no feet to follow my beat. Right. Tadpole cried and swam so deep in despair that his tail started to shrink. But Tadpole still longed to dance. Finally, Tadpole turned and swam back to the surface. Looking up at his star, he smiled big in who he is and clapped. But I can! I believe! Whoosh! Wham! You can do anything! Yes, Tadpole grew feet. Baboon fell to his knees from all he'd just seen, but kept pounding his drum to be in the fun as that first frog hopped to the beat singing. Ribbit, ribbit, dream it, live it. The next starry night, curious Baboon, who wanted his dream too, got close when he saw Flamingo wish upon her twinkling star. Oh, how I wish for beauty. But Moody Baboon still had to sneer. Why beauty? You're too ordinary. Oh no, you're right. 
Flamingo cried in such pain that she turned an awful gray. But Flamingo still hoped for beauty. Finally, Flamingo felt her beauty within. Looking up at her star, she smiled big in who she is and clapped. But I can! I believe! Whoosh! Wham! You can have anything! Yes! Flamingo turned an amazing shade of pink. And this time, Baboon tried to catch her wished upon star. But he missed and fell down hard. Now he lay back in pain, scratching his head as Flamingo flew by and said, Look at me! I'm extraordinary! Please never give up on your dream. Starry night, Baboon thinks he figured out their shh secret. So he finds his twinkling star and makes a wish. Oh, I really wish to celebrate everyone's dream coming true and encourage others too. But then Baboon sneered at himself. <laughs> Who would even come to my celebration? I've been a buffoon of a baboon. Alone and miserable, Termite stood near and sneered. <laughs> no one. Oh no, you're right. Baboon cried as he covered his face in shame. But Baboon still kept imagining ways to celebrate. Finally, Baboon uncovered his face. Looking up at his star, he smiled big in who he is and boom! Clapped! But I can! I believe! Whoosh! Wham! You can celebrate your life! Baboon radiated fun, and everyone actually came as he passed out pom-poms and drums for his boom-shake celebration. Wahoo, shake your pom-poms, shake and know, you guys are heroes to show us how. Baboon stopped mid-cheer because someone wasn't there. Who was missing? Termite. Baboon had seen her wish upon a star for a home like the bees, filled with friends and family. Instead, Termite dug a hole and Baboon found her all alone. She'd been too afraid to try. So Baboon got Frog, and together they wrote her a song, Sing Along. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, smile big in who you are. Clap I can and dare believe, dreams come true for you and me. We will wish upon After the song, Termite, looking up at her star, 
smiled big in who she is and clapped. But I can. I believe. Whoosh! Wham! You can love and be loved. Termite built a giant castle full of love, fun, friends, and family. They even crowned Termite Queen as she bowed and said, If someone as miserable as me can live her dream, you can too. So please try the secret. Shh! Wish upon your star, smile big in who you are, and believe. With that, Baboon and his newfound friends finished his Boom Shake celebration. Wahoo, shake your pom poms, smile big. Fuzzy's Balloon. Red shoes, yellow shoes, green shoes, blue shoes. Which do you think Buzzy will choose? Buzzy picks blue. What about you? Balloons are red, balloons are blue. Which do you think Buzzy will choose? Buzzy picks blue. What about you? Come on, balloon, follow me. There are lots of toys for you to see. Balloon on a string tied to his bed. Buzzy likes it near his head. Good night, balloon. You sleep tight. See you in the morning. Now, good night. Morning comes. <gasps> the air's all out. Buzzy gives his mom a shout. Mommy, mommy, balloons no more. Make it like it was before. Mommy knows just what to do. I'll blow it up again for you. Mommy blows and blows and blows. The balloon grows and grows and grows. Mommy says, it's good as new. I blew it up again for you. Balloon on a string, balloon on a string. Mommies are a wonderful thing. My balloon is blue. My balloon's up high. Look at how my balloon can fly. Catch it. Chase it. Throw it. Shove it. Hold it. Hug it. Squish it. 
love it. Pop! Mommy? Mommy? I can't fix the balloon for you. Once it's popped, a balloon is through. <laughs> Buzzy doesn't want to play. No, no, no. Not right away. Not with a puzzle. Not with a ball. Not with anything at all. Then he sees a good old friend, and his feelings start to mend. <laughs> the end. Friends book, Pond Party. It was a hot summer day. Otter was thankful he had a cool pond to swim in. Ah, Otter sighed with delight as he swam a few backstrokes in the cool water. But then he stopped. My friends must be so hot without a pond to keep them cool, thought Otter. I should invite them to join me. And so Otter set out into the forest to invite his friends to the pond. As Otter walked, he bumped into a log. Bump! Bonk! Bunny peeked out of the log. Otter? she asked. Hello, Bunny, said Otter. What are you doing inside this log? I am hiding from the sun. It is very hot today, Bunny said. It is very hot indeed, said Otter. Would you like to take a swim in my pond? I would love to, said Bunny. Let's go. And off they went. As Otter and Bunny walked, they slipped and fell into a big mud puddle. Plop! Squish! Bear rolled over and sat up in the middle of the mud puddle. Otter? And Bunny? He asked. Hello, Bear, said Otter. What are you doing in this mud puddle? I'm trying to keep cool. It is very hot today, replied Bear. It is very hot indeed, said Otter. Would you like to take a swim in my pond? I would love to, said Bear. Let's go. And off they went. As Otter, Bunny, and Bear walked, they stepped into a big pile of leaves. Crunch, crunch. Hello, I'm under here, called a voice and out popped Bird from under the leaves. Bird, said Otter surprised. What are you doing under these leaves? It's the only place I could find shade, said Bird. It is very hot today. It is very hot indeed, said Otter. Would you like to take a swim in my pond? I would love to, said Bird. Let's go and off they went. Together, Otter, Bunny, Bear, and Bird walked back to the pond. The water was cool and refreshing. It was a hot and humid day in the forest. The perfect kind of day for a pond party. The End don't have books, then what are you waiting for? Books is kids safe, it has storybooks that are brought to life, and third, 
It's fun. I like to read books about fantasy and love. I tell other kids to get books because it's full of stories and laughter. I'll read it on the go, in a car, in a plane, even in a train. I've never been on a train. Don't wait around. Ask your grown up to download books now. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Books app for free today.